music, don't it? <laughs> yeah, gotta get it out the mud, that's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Been through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the door, better kick that again. Cause that's the only way to win. That's the only way to go. Gotta get it out the mud. Gotta get it out the flow. Cause that's the only way to go. Let's go. Shoot. Lights out. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shooting Lights Out with Joe Host, Don in the place like us all this here. This weekend, I hope y'all had a very, very Merry Christmas here. And uh, to get things started off, we're going to go right into it. I'm not going to take too much of your time, so let's get right into it. We are going around the hardwood, ladies and gentlemen, and to be getting off the hardwood, it's like, Texas coach Chris Beard's fiance say he didn't strangle her. This is a continuation of what took place last week when I joined Joe and Chris Beard was arrested on domestic violence charges. That was about a week ago. And, and you see here, December 23rd is when the fiance said he didn't strangle her. So now we have this. So with this is coming out and things like this happen. When does Chris Beard come back to the sidelines for the University of Texas? Okay. All right. So the woman who called the police to report a family violence also by Texas basketball coach Chris Beard said Friday that Beard did not strangle her and she never wanted him arrested or prosecuted. Beard was suspended indefinitely without pay after his December 12 arrest on felony charges of strangling his fiance, Ronnie Chur. Who's lot who lives with him in a statement sent to the Associated Press by her attorney, Randy Livlet, Twilight said she is deeply saddened by the incident and said Beard was acting in self-defense from her. I could get going, but I don't want to take too much of your time. But hey, she said he, she she said he didn't strangle her. It was self-defense on his part, which is rarely the case in most situations but this movie here right there nevertheless when does chris Berg get his position back as a coach at the university of texas when does he get to coach the team because texas i believe texas can't really use their coach right about now it's been a struggle for the for the longhorns as they are currently sitting at the at the record of 10 and 1 as of right now they still holding on they are ranked six in the country right now but to have your head coach back you have to bring your head coach back. especially now we definitely getting into the deep in our heart of conference play now we have passed the christmas week the christmas weekend we think we're ready to go to the new year and then right around the corner about a month from now we'll be having the final sec big 12 tournament uh challenge so the be ability to get Chris Beard's battle will be plays huge dividends for the Texas Longhorns. Next article. Suns guard Booker exits. Overtime loss in the first quarter. This was the Christmas Day game when the Phoenix Suns traveled to Denver to take on the Denver Nuggets. I will be recapping that game in a bit. But Devin Booker was lost in the first quarter to a, gro a growing swervedness. So he has a sweat is going and is going, and he did not. He was unable to finish the game. Straight on to our next article here. James Harden, Moline Fee Agency return to Houston. This is by our own by ESPN's own Adrian Wojnarowski. Roj, he reported this on Christmas Day that James Harden is, would not will not mind going back to Houston if things don't work out in Philly. Speaking of which, I'll be speaking on Philly a little later on in the show. Article says that all-star guard James Harden is seriously considering a return to the Houston Rockets and for Asian this July. If he if he decides against a new deal with the Philadelphia 76ers, Harden and his inner circle have been openly weighing Houston in recent months. So I say a remarkable possibility given that he requests and received a trade out of the franchise less than two years ago. His future with the 76 remains a 
a fluid proposition, one that has been by with eight straight wins, including a 119-112 win over the New York Knicks on Christmas Day. Harden is on a productive road with All Star, with All NBA center Joel and B in the state. Of that partnership and the 76 of the postseason success could well be telltale factors in how Harden proceeds to pass this season. Experiencing a deep playoff run in a rap hungry Philadelphia marketplace could probably impact his thinking. Just as the fallout of an exit early could too. So I'll begin to the Philadelphia 76 and their eight game win streak later on the show with their heat check because I'm putting them in the heat check. So that's why I'll be getting on foot we can get with Philly about because they have been playing an impressive basketball as of late. But for us are going back to Houston, that'd be interesting to see when July gets here when he hits free agency. Or oh, maybe he gets a new deal with the Philadelphia Seven Sisters before then. But for now, this is something interesting to talk about, something interesting to think about because the fact that you just asked for your way out of Philly two years ago and trying to come back is very, very interesting there, James Harden. Moving on. Trash talk heats up between in budding roof as Warriors top Grizzlies. All right. So the other team I'll be focusing on today is the Golden State Warriors. This article was written by Kendra Andrew after the Golden State Warriors beat the Memphis Grizzlies on Christmas night. Article begins with with three point with three minutes and forty three seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Clay Thompson rolls above Dylan Brooks to knock down a twenty foot of jump shot to put the Golden State Warriors up sixteen. Brooks stumbled backwards, falling over in the process. As Thompson ran back on defense, he leaned over Brooks side side shuffling three times when stick, while sticking his tongue out in Brooks' face. Some good old fat. Some good old fashioned trash talk, Thompson said, in regards to what he do. It's always fun to trash talk. We've been doing it since that since we were in middle school. You usually play your best or you get fuzzled, or you get phased. For me, it's usually the form. So yes, they had they went home, got a big win at home over the Memphis Grizzlies. Good job, Golden State. But Golden State will be getting a flagrant foul to quote to later on in the show because something is very fucking about this team home as opposed to on the road. Something's going on here. I don't like it. And these are the reigning defending world NBA champions here. So, yeah, so you get Philly for a heat check and you'll get going to stay for a fragrant foul. Don't miss those. Moving on to our next article. Uh LeBron James says, quote, life without Anthony Davis, very difficult for Lakers. <laughs> David Menon wrote this article, and this article begins by saying, the Los Angeles Lakers Christmas Day took a turn for the worse after halftime with the Mavericks Blitz in L.A. in the third quarter to a 124-115 win, L.A.'s fourth straight loss without Anthony Davis. Lakers coach Darvin Ham has continued to start the 6-1 Patrick Beverly alongside with the 6-1 Dennis Struder in the backcourt since the 6-10 Davis was sidelined with a stress injury in his right foot just more than a week ago. Ham even played a lineup featuring the 6-3 Russell Westbrook at center on Sunday. After the loss, the fourth straight in, in which Lakers Allow its opponents to score 124 or more. Was it, he was asked about the challenge of making up for Davis' absence for the rest for the rest of the, with the rest of the roster. Coach Ham said, "Quote: You throw everything up against the wall and see what sticks. It's one of those types of situations. AD's not here, not in the lineup. We're not going to start using that as an excuse. Hell yeah, it's a big hole in our lineup, but now we're pros." We've got to step up. Close. Quote. LeBron James, who led off with 38 points on 13 for 23 shooting, offered a start assessment of the Lakers option without Anthony Davis, however. The King says, quote, reality is without AD, we lose a lot of length, which we don't, which we don't have already. 
So we have to make up it. We have to make up in ways that without AD is very difficult, very challenging. So I think at one point we had a lineup. I think of Austin Reeves at six five, who was the tallest guy on the court. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out that Davis is sorely missed. Close quote. The king says it's a struggle without Anthony Davis. But it's LeBron James here. You're the king. You know, you're the greatest of all time in people's eyes. I bet it's different, but just the year on there. Without the AD, it's a struggle. It's just, it's, it's just a hard struggle. It's, it's tough. They lost four straight. They, they are still under 500. As we get ready to go to the new year, just they are seven games on the 500, actually, 13 and 20. It's a struggle, man. It is a struggle. I know. I understand. It is a struggle. Okay. But hey, you got to do what you got to do, man. You got to do what you got to do. So for the Lakers fans and the Brian James fans, what you going to do without Anthony Davis for at least the next two months, at least with the stress injury in his foot? What you going to do? Are you going to stay below 500? Are you going to make your way up the ladder and do something about it? Like uh, y'all trying to do with LeBron James trying to break the record for scoring over Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. What you going to do? And speaking of which, the final, the final way we're going to end around the hardwood is by a quick recap of what took place on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, we begin in this, in Madison Square Garden, New York City, when the New York Knicks play host to the Philadelphia 76ers, as you already know from what we did earlier. Philadelphia 119, New York 112, Philly ran a streak up to eight in a row. The very next game is around the 2 o'clock, 2.30 area was in Dallas, Texas, when the Dallas Mario led by Luka Donald took on LeBron James, the Los Angeles Lakers without Anthony Davis. And as you can see, the final score, 124 to 115. Christian Woods put up a 30 burger along with Luka Doncic. LeBron James led all scores with 38, but it wasn't enough. As you can see, they lost by nine. The 5 o'clock game took us to TD Garden, where it was the Boston Celtics with the best record in the league, taking on the team with the second best record in the league, also in the East, the Milwaukee Bucks, my Eastern Conference Finals. And round one of this matchup goes to the Boston Celtics, 139-118. Jason Taylor with a 40-point game. Jalen Brown added 29. Giannis added 30. But he didn't get no help as it was a beat down from start to finish. By the way, Jason Tatum dunked on Giannis. I don't know if y'all saw that, but Jason Tatum legitly dunked on Giannis. Two of his 42 points came on a dunk over Giannis. He posterized Giannis. Y'all can look it up. Go back and find it on YouTube and whatnot. But hell of a game for the Boston Celtics, moving their record up to 24 and 10, dropping or walking to 22 and 11. Good job. And then the beginning of the night, Cal took us to Golden State, the San Francisco Chase Center, where the Golden State Warriors without Steph Curry for the fifth consecutive game, taking on the up and coming and look and look no further. Memphis Grizzlies with John Morant and crew all healthy. And then the game where the Golden State had to have, and Memphis had to have too for confidence reasons, but. And all the Toronto teams really go stay who did it. 123 to 109. Golden State chased down the Memphis Grizzlies. And in the nightcap from the Bay Area down to the Mile High City, we go to the Denver Nuggets where they hosted the Phoenix Suns. You know, Kelly Jokic, the two time reigning league MVP, dropped a 40 point triple double. I believe 115 15 and 15. As you as we mentioned earlier on the heart was seven Devin Booker S out in the first quarter. So it was 128-125 victory for the Denver Nuggets in no overtime. And that will conclude around the hardwood, ladies and gentlemen. A break here, and we'll be back. 
The Playmakers blog is proudly to announce that it is sponsored by Fanatics. Fanatics, where you can get all your official license, sports gear, memorabilia, whether it is for the National Football League, the National Basketball Association, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, or even International Soccer League, or even college sports. So whip your team, whip the hardware, get comfortable, because Fanatics is the way to go. Where sports fans shop and official license everything. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I have a new heat check theme. Thanks to my good friend Cole Johnson for that. And he also did my favorite part one. So that will be debuting today as well. The screen here, you see the Philadelphia 76ers on your screen. Why do you see the Philadelphia 76ers on the screen? Because the Philadelphia 76ers are currently filth in ease with a 20 and 12 record, ladies and gentlemen. These numbers are not eye popping whatsoever. They are only 19th in, in the league in scoring at 111.7. 28th in rebounding per game at 40.4. 18 in assists at 24.3. Second, however, in opponents' points per game at 107.7. That is a four point difference. However, though, the Philadelphia 76ers have won eight in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, you go back a month ago to November 25th, which is 16 games, as you can see on your screen. That's 14 games here. The Philadelphia 76ers are 11 and 3 in in a month span. 11 and 3, which includes the eight in a row that we're gonna dive into more of in a bit. But as you can see, back on November 25th, we're on Thanksgiving time. They won three straight, beat my Orlando Magic twice, and a victory over the Atlanta Hawks. Before they lost, they they were small three in road trip at Cleveland, at Memphis, and at Houston. Before they just whipped off winning eight in a row, which includes Christmas Day game against the New York Knicks. This season, Joel and B. It's putting up monstrous numbers, 33.1 points per game with 9.7 rebounds a game and four and a half assists a game. Doing a hell of a job doing it during this time. Running mate James Harden also doing his thing, 21.8 points per game, 6.4 rebounds a game, 11.1 assists a game. But what we most people when it comes to James Harden, it's not about the regular season, it's about the postseason. But, hey, you still got to play the regular season, so – I'm going to give the man his props on this one because he is playing his ball. He's, he's playing ball as usual, but he's playing ball. And then the third member of the group is Tyrese Massey. 22.9 points per game, three and a half rebounds a game, 4.4 assists a game. So those are your triple three guys right there, and they're doing their thing. With Philly, as I showed you earlier, going back to a month ago on November, November 25th, they won three straight, and then they lost three straight as you can see on your screen right here. But after that, it's been eight in a row. They beat the Lakers on December 9th, beat the Charlotte Hornets on December 11th, the Sacramento Kings on December 13th, the Golden State Warriors December 16th, the Toronto Raptors December 19th, the Detroit Pistons December 20th, the Los Angeles Clippers December 23rd, and on Christmas Day at Madison Square Garden, defeating the New York Knicks, okay? And in doing so, and is doing this eight game registry that we're going to focus on here. They have they are, the seventy six are scoring one hundred and twenty points per game. They are shooting forty nine point three percent from the field and forty one point one percent from three point range. These dudes are playing some good basketball. And as you can see here, let's go back. As you can see here, they beat the Lakers by dropping one thirty three. They beat the Charlotte Hornets by dropping one thirty one. They dropped 123 against the Sacramento Kings, 118 to the Golden State Warriors, 104 to the Toronto Raptors, 113 to the Detroit Pistons, 119 to the Los Angeles Clippers, and 119 again to the New York Knicks. That's how that has been going on. So, again, 
They are scoring 120 points per game while shooting 49% from the field and 41 from three-point range. But you, we all know who the stars of this run is and the star of this team. It is James Harden and Joel B. And the duo doing these eight-game winning streak. These are the numbers from the eight-game winning streak. They are they have combined for 57.3 points per game. They are shooting that combined 51.4% from the field. 43.9% from three-point range, grabbing 16 rebounds and do additional 16 assists a game. That is the deal of James Hart and Joel and B doing this eight-game win streak that they have going on as of right now. As far as individual-wise, Joel and B has been a monster doing this eight-game streak, scoring 35.6 points per game, shooting 55.7 from the field, shooting 52.4% from three-point range, and while averaging 10 rebounds a game doing this eight-game win streak. He's a volume you a double double. He's efficient from the floor, efficient from three point range, and he's showing his dominance during his eight game winning streak. This is what we want to see. And just to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, my play, my lights out playmaker of the week is Joel B because of what he has been doing during his eight game winning streak, what he has done thus far within the last two games, both against the Knicks. And the Los, Los Angeles Clippers, Joel and the B has been balling his ball, his tail off. And the, the Philadelphia 76 are very thankful that he is continue to get better, continue to work on his game. His running mate, James Harden, on the otherwise, during this same stretch, his eight game winning streak, he is scoring 21.6 points per game, shooting 45% from the field, shooting just below 41 from three. Grabbing six rebounds a game and dishing out just about 13 assists a game. James Harden is being that consensual scoring guard when he needs to be and also being a point guard when he needs to be. As you can see here, averaging close to 13 assists during his eight-game winning streak is showing you that he's getting others involved, or not just him scoring, but he's getting others involved as well. So well, you have to like what you're seeing from the Philadelphia 76ers. It's been very impressive. They got themselves fifth in the East right now. They are playing some good ball. Let's see, can they keep it up? Because the next few games here should be interesting. Tomorrow night, they are in the nation's capital when they take on the Washington Wizards. Then on the 30th, they head down to New Orleans to take on Zion Wilson and the New Orleans Pelicans. New Year's Eve on December 31st, they head to OKC with a showdown with Shea Gillis Alexander, who's been balling his butt off as well. And then after New Year's Day, January 2nd, their first game of the New Year of 2023, they will be seeing Zion Williamson and the Pelicans again, this time in Philadelphia. And after that, two days later on January 4th, the Indiana Pacers come walking in. And after that, January 6th, the Chicago Bulls come walking in. Realistically, I can see them getting past. The Wizards won that streak to nine. They'll probably lose at the Pelicans, so they won streak will end at nine. But I can see them winning the other four. So they could be on a roll going. They could be on a road. They could still be on a roll going into the new year and after the new year. Philly's playing hot. Philly's playing good ball. I have no questions about it. I am, I am like what I'm seeing. I am enjoying what I'm seeing. Let's see, can they keep it up as of right now? So that's it for this. This is your heat chat with the hood up here. 76 up break. We'll be back. We're going to have a figure.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shooting Lights Out. As you can see, that is all the show that's under the Playmakers Blog Network. Check them all out, whatever it is, whatever sport you like, check them all out. We got some for all of you. As you just saw, the the foundation, the intro to Fragrant Fire has been made. As again, yet again, shout out to my good friend, Cole Johnson, for that. I love it. I am thankful for it. And as you can see on your screen, we have the Golden State Warriors on here. And as we have the Golden State Warriors on here, as you can see, they are in the Fragrant Fire session. As of right now, they are literally 16 and 18 on the season they are 11th in the west they are fifth in scoring at 116.7 so they have no problem scoring the ball as they never did 20 of re 20 of rebound with 42.7 rebounds first and assists they lead the league in assists at 29.4 and they are 26 in opponents points per game at 117.6 this is why you're two games on the 500 the opponent scored more points than you. But well, why is that? That is because, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see here, as you can see here, the Golden State Warriors lost road games against the Charlotte Hornets back in October 29th, a road game at Detroit on October 30th, road game in Miami on November 1st, road game at Orlando. November 3rd, and a road game November 4th at New Orleans. But that was just the beginning of it. And as you can see here, they give up 120 to Charlotte, 128 to Detroit, 116 to Miami, 130 to my Atlanta measure, and 114 to New Orleans. But it gets better. December 13th, you gave up 128 to the Milwaukee Bucks, and that was on, that was on TNT. 125 to the to the Indiana Pacers. 118 to the Philadelphia 76ers. If we won a world game at Toronto when you dropped 126, but then you faced off against the New York Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets in back to back days. The Knicks dropped 132 on you, and then the Brooklyn Nets dropped 143. 143. 140. Three. I'm gonna let y'all think on that for a minute. Did you have no time to think on that one? Did you have no time to think on that? One forty three to the Brooklyn Nets, one thirty two to the New York Knicks. I mean. It's abysmal. Just abysmal. And by the way, let me dive more into this game. The New York Knicks, when they played on December 20th, all right? Jordan Poole scored 26 points. He shot 8 from 15, 8 from eight for 18 from the field, 2 from 8 from 3 from range. Clay Thompson, 11 points, 5 from 12 from the field, 1 for 5 from 3 from range. Jordan Poole was a minus 27. Clay Thompson was a minus 28 against the Knicks. Brooklyn, Clay Thompson didn't play. Jordan Poole, 13 points, 4 for 17 from the field, 1 for 11 from 3, a minus 31. Minus 31. Steph Curry has been the man for the Golden State Warriors. 30 points, 6.6 rebounds a game, 6.8 assists per game. But as we all know, he's currently out with that shoulder injury. He will be rearing value in about two weeks. Somebody else that's been out is Andrew Williams. 19 points a game, five rebounds a game. He's been out too. So they you can throw you can say injuries has been a part of the reason why they've been struggling. But it's more to it than that because they were struggling on the road with Andrew Williams and Steph Curry. I'm gonna show you why in a bit. Clay Thompson is what he's averaging thus far this season, 18 points a game, three about four rebounds a game. And then Jordan Poole, he's he's averaging 19 points a game with four assists a game. So that's what they're averaging. However, he, on Christmas Day, when they got back home, as we already know, they dropped 123 against the Memphis Grizzlies. And Memphis and John Morant, Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, Jeremy Justin Terry, they was healthy. Steven Adams, and yet the Golden State went in on Memphis. 
as they say, a rivalry is brewing between these two because these this this is the best they look. But Golden State was at home though. You see John Poole, 32 points, John Morant, 36 points. It's interesting to see, right? All right. Well, I'm going to leave that right there for right now. Here's the problem. Golden State Warriors, they are 3-10. and 10. I mean, three, they are 3-7 and seven their last 10 games. By the way, do I, do I have that up there? Let me see. Do I have that up there? No, I do not. So let's go back. Let's go back early. This right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. These six games are part of that three and seven. Okay. And including Memphis. At home, the Golden State Warriors are 13 and 2 at home. On the road, however, 3 and 16. 3 and 16. 3 and 16. Now, I want y'all to really think about this because we are talking about the Golden State Warriors here. We're talking about the Golden State Warriors. At home, they average 120.4 points per game at home. How many points did they score against Memphis? 123. On the road, however, they score an average of 113.7 on the road. That is a 6.8. Seven that's a 6.7 points per game difference on home and road. At home, the Golden State Warriors shoot 48.8 percent from the field. On the road, they shoot 46.8 percent from the field. Three pointers at home is 39.4 percent. On the road, is 36.9 percent. They are a plus 10.6. 10, they are a plus 10.6 at home. They are a minus 10. Okay. In the games they won, which is mostly at home, 123.1. In their 18 losses that they have on the season, they average 111. That is a 12.1 difference on wins and losses. This is solely fragrant from the reigning defending world champions that I had to do it. And Shout out to my good friend Brian Snow for allowing me to give me the okay to put the flagrant foul on the Golden State Warriors because this is flagrant. When you were home, you are a dominant team, but on the road is where we scratch our head. Because if you recall, ladies and gentlemen, in all the playoff runs and the championship that Golden State has won in recent years, we knew you have to take at least two out of Golden State because they've taken one at your place. We know for a fact they're taking one at your place because they just that damn good team. They are a good road team. What has happened? What happened? Now, this is before Steph Curry got injured. This is before Andrew Wiggins got hurt. Y'all was still losing these world games and fragrantly losing. Let me go back to it again. Look here. You guys literally lost to my Orlando Magic, which is one of the worst teams in the league. You lost to the Detroit Pistons, which is one of the worst teams in the league. Nobody gives a crap about the Charlotte Hornets, but you lost to them. Okay? These are the teams you lost to. Okay, we can understand Milwaukee. We're not going to harp too long about Indiana. We can understand Philly. Toronto is one of those teams, too. New York. No, the thing about it, you got 132 to 94. And then you fall back up against the Brooklyn Nets, 143 to 13. You got beat by 38 by the Knicks. And then you get beat by 30 to the Brooklyn Nets. Before you played Memphis, you got beat by a combined score 68 points. And this is supposed to be the reigning defending NBA world champions. And this is what you're giving us on the road. This is not what we expect from the reigning defending champions that are the Golden State Warriors. Now, nevertheless, nevertheless, they are the reigning defending world champions. Steph Curry will be back. Andrew Wiggins will be back. Klay Thompson will be back, and he will start playing more like Klay Thompson. Draymond Green is still part of the team. Kevon Lutie is still part of the team. Nevertheless. 
But still, that is freedom of how pathetic y'all look on the road compared to home. Now, with that being said, you see this stretch here? All home games, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven home games. You're already on the eight-game home snake. You beat Memphis at home already, so you want to know. You got Charlotte coming up tomorrow. Should be 2-0 because I don't think Charlotte can hang with y'all. Then it gets interesting because here come the Utah Jazz walking in. And then December 30th, it's the Portland Trailblazers. New Year hits. We get past New Year's Day. We get back to it because January 2nd, here come Trey Young, Devontae Murray, and the Atlanta Hawks. January 4th is the Detroit Pins. You should take care of Detroit. And then January 7th is my Orlando Magic. You should take care of my Orlando Magic before you have another meeting with the Phoenix Suns. And last time y'all met them, it was in Phoenix, and it wasn't a fun one for you guys. Okay, so you have, you should have one, two, three easy wins. And the other, the other four could be tricky because you talking, put the ball in the bucket. Dame Lillard is back in Portland can score with anybody. Depending on what Trey Young you get, you don't know which Hawk team you're going to get. And Phoenix Suns, yeah, that's a rival. That's a bit of a rival with y'all, too. So, no, we can get that. But at home is not the problem. So, let's just say y'all do. Let's just say y'all go. Let's say somewhat. Let's go five and two. You lose to Philly, and you lose to Phoenix, and you lose to Utah or Portland. So, you go. You go six and two in your homestand. That will put you at 22 and 20 after January 10th. You'll be above 500, two games above 500 at that, instead of being down two games over 500. And then that's when the interesting question is, because after January 11th, you have World Games again. At San Antonio, January 13th. At Chicago, January 15th. At Washington, January 16th. At Boston, January 19th, and at Cleveland, January 20th. And y'all have not been looking good on the road. You should be able to beat San Antonio, but who knows what kind of team going to show up on that one. You should beat the Chicago Bulls, but it could be one of them games where Zach Levine and the Monterey Royals might actually play well together for once and actually destroy y'all because y'all are the reigning defending champions. You should be the Washington, but you never know with Bradley Bill. Then that leaves their final rematch round two with the Boston Celtics, the last one of the season, because they was already there. And I believe I believe Golden State won that game. But right now y'all go this back to TD on where y'all won the championship at when you closed them out at. And then you go to Cleveland, who has been balling their tails off lately as well. So you have a nice eight-game road stick at home. You have a nice stick at home at World. You already started off Royal by beating Memphis at home. Now you have seven more home games going into the new year. And then after that, you have five more. You have another road trip coming up. As I said, they score 120 points per game at home. So I spent at least 115, 110 at the very least for the next Seven games with Golden State at home, but on the road, you're scoring 113, about 114. But that come back and hunt y'all on this road trip that is shown on the screen right here. Golden State. And hopefully by then, you'll have Steph Curry back and Andrew Rubens back, so that should help. But nevertheless, Golden State, y'all road, road team play is so flagrant that even Snowman had to tell me to do it. Get it together on the road, because we know what you can do at home. Get it together on the road, please. Get it together. The Playmakers Bar is proudly to announce that it lettered a partnership deal with Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Stream live sports from any device that you have, whether it's your computer, laptop, or even your cellular device. Catch breaking news live when it happens and enjoy a mountain of entertainment from movies to shows to whatever you love doing. Paramount Plus. Plan starts at $4.99 a month, but right now you can get a free trial. Just hit that link below with the Playmakers blog and start your free trial right now. 
Paramount Plus, Mountains of the Entertainment. All right, welcome back to Showing Lights Out. And as we get ready to close out here, got some games for you to watch this week. Starting up with the women's on this on the twenty eighth. I think I did that wrong. Hold on. Yep. Yeah, nope. On the women's side, you can watch some women's basketball back on the twenty eighth when the Michigan Wolverines travel to Nebraska to take on the Corn Husker. That is at seven p.m. on the Big Ten Network. Number nine, the UConn Huskies. We'll be traveling to 21 Creighton Blue Jays in a Big E showdown. And speaking of the Big E showdown, they have another one at 8 p.m. When the Villanova Wildcats take on the Marquette Golden Eagles. Then on the 29th, ladies and gentlemen, number 10, LSU taking on 17 ranked Arkansas. Oh, excuse me. Arkansas on ESPN2 at 7 p.m. On the ACC Network, we have a we have a battle of 11 and 1 teams battling another in the ACC when seven ranked. NC State Wolfpack play host to the Duke Blue Devils on the ACC X Network at 8 p.m. Number six ranked the Tar Heels, the Lady Tar Heels, taking on the Lady Seminoles of Florida State. And then on the Big Ten Network, the Big Ten action, Clady Cart is leading 13 ranked Iowa against 10 and 2 Purdue Boilermakers. That is the Lady side. Trip over to the men's side on the men's. No, that's nope. Take that back. Continue on with the ladies. Jump the gun there. The Lady Volunteers trying to right their ship with their 76 record, but they are in Gainesville on the 29th at 6 p.m. when they take on the 11 and 2 Florida Gators. The 10 and 2 Syracuse Orange Ladies are in Louisville, or in Louisville, Kentucky, when they take on the 10 and 4 Louisville Cardinals. The Georgia Bulldogs 11 and 3, they are in Tuscaloosa to take on the Alabama Crimson Tide, and then Auburn 10 and 2 taking on Ole Miss at 11. Too, that is the ladies side now we go to the men's side on the men's side beginning tomorrow you have a big e showdown between seton hall and the 24 ranked golden eagles of marquette and then two days and then two days from today on the 28th espn2 sec play when my florida gators will take on bruce pearl and the 23rd ranked auburn tigers sticking in the sec play F rank the volunteers of Tennessee taking a 10 and 2 record on the road as they take on the old Miss Rebels. Also on the 20 for the men's number 19, the Kentucky Wild the Kentucky Wildcats will be facing off against the Missouri Tigers, who are 11 and 1. Kentucky better be careful going into that building to take on the Missouri Tigers. The ninth rank Alabama Crimson Tide with their 10 and 2 record are on the road at 15 rank Mississippi State, who is 11 and 1. A top 15 showdown up there in Mississippi. And the final game to look out for when it comes to the men's college basketball ranking stays in the SEC. Hand down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, when the LSU Tigers. Are 11 and 1. They will be hosting 10th ranked Arkansas Razorback, who also 11 and 1. And for the NBA wise, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, 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 you can catch the Brooklyn Nets, who are who have also won eight in a row, like the Philadelphia Sixers, because they are on the road to take on the Cleveland Cavaliers, 7 p.m. NBA TV. At 8 p.m. tonight, you can see the Indiana Pacers take on Zion Wilson and the New Orleans Pelicans. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, you can begin your night with 8 o'clock when the Phoenix Suns travel to Memphis to take on John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. Will Devin Booker be able to play that game? How would the Memphis Grizzlies bounce back after getting smacked on Christmas Day by the Golden State Warriors? And then on NBA TV at 8.30, Julius Rondo and the New York Knicks try to regroup a Christmas Day loss against a team who won on Christmas Day in the Dallas Mavericks, two teams on both sides of the conference, both by 18 and 16. Who takes it? Julius Randle, the Knicks, or Luka Doncic, and the Dallas Mavericks. That's all the games that you watch. Thank you for tuning in to Shooting Lights Up with the Playmaker here. Hope you have a great day, and let's get ready for the New Year's. Catch y'all later. Good. You've done great. But you can't stop here. You can't stop now. You got to keep going through all your trials and your tribulations. You got to keep pushing. Now, finish your camp. Yeah, got to get it out the mud. That's the only way to win. Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen? Being through the ups and downs like the letter in. They don't let you through the dope. Better kick it again. Girl, that's
the only way to win. That's the only way to go. Gotta get it out of mud. Gotta get it out of flow. Cause that's the only way to go. Let's go. Thank you for tuning in today's episode. If you want to follow the podcast, you can follow it on all streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and a whole lot more. This has been Shooting the Lights Out. Masterpiece.